Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Ati Allah, Ati Rasul wa Ulul Amri Minkum and always a reminder for myself and Abdukul Ajeezu, Da'ifu, Miskeen, Al-Zalim, Al-Jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah that Allah give us a life in which to see the holy month of Ramadan and the month of fasting and the month of immense rahmah and mercy from Divinely Presence which is first 10 days of fasting Babur Rahma, the gate of rahmah and mercy opens and that Allah dress the servant with an immense mercy in which allows them the ability to fast. That immense barakah and immense blessings that Allah opens allows the servant to enter into that fast, to be dressed by its lights and blessed by its lights. Alhamdulillah that only Allah come into our lives and pious people inspire within our hearts always that fasting with all our senses, that the beauty of Ramadan and its immense blessings is a state in which to fast from all our senses, not only the sense of not eating but to fast with our ears, to fast with our eyes, to fast with our breath, to fast with our tongue, to fast with everything and all our senses so that Allah can dress them and bless them. That the fast of the tongue is one aspect of Ramadan but the fasting with our hearing. That we pray that in this month of Ramadan Allah clean for us our hearing and that in each Ramadan Allah open a different sense and a different reality of that sense so that to have completed its siyam and its abstinence, abstaining from the bad, abstaining from unnecessary. So alhamdulillah that the hearing that we make an intention that from our senses, Ya Rabbi from the hearing that is so immensely important and samina wa atana is to hear and to obey and the practice of obey, obedience and obeying the teaching is to bring a discipline within the self so that we can obey the real self. Not the self that people talk about, They're, they talk about a self which we know to be the nafs. But obedience and ihtiba and following from Atiullah, Ati Rasulu Ulul Amri Minkum, it's a training in which to be enrolled in a school of guidance that I'm going to follow my best Allah's commands. I'm going to follow my best the commands and the teachings of Sayyidina Muhammad and exhibited by example through the, the shaykhs, wa ulul amri minkum. And I try my best to follow their teachings, to adhere to their practices as to discipline the self. When I discipline myself and Allah finds acceptance and sincerity in the student's path, then Allah begin to open for them the understanding of their own self, their real self, the light that Allah has given to them in Divinely Presence that wants to inspire the light within the physicality. We've described before Allah gives us only a small portion of that light inside our body not giving the whole secret so that you go and destroy it and destroy the body and destroy all of its realities. Allah only give us an inheritance, a small portion of that light to see that what you're going to do? Are you going to nourish that light, bless that light, build that light, make that light to become eternal from just the flame of a candle? Are you going to reach to be an eternal light in which no wind can take it out? Life as a candle will 
anything can blow that light out, its faith and its practices will be gone. Our life is, is waqaf and vigilance over this light within our heart that I make it to be strong, I make it with my practices and my listening, my adherence to what's being taught and what Allah wanted from me, that becomes the stations of faith in which the faith of the servant is built and built and built so that their flame is no longer a candle but Allah ignites them like a sun. Can you imagine going to the sun and trying to blow it out? Nothing can come to blowing that out. But anything else can easily be overtaken and extinguished. So then this reality and this, this way of marifa, Allah giving us an ability that get your heart to be lit. And the way that that heart is going to be ignited, its secret is in the ears. How faith going to enter into the heart? That's why when the Arabi came to Prophet said, we believe. And Allah corrected and gave Ayatul Kareem, don't tell them they don't believe, they've merely accepted you They've seen your beauty, they've accepted you but they haven't believed, they haven't come into their training and all the testing that Allah is going to put upon the servant. So means then this reality of hearing that, Ya Rabbi I'm trying my best to open the reality of I hear and I obey. If we can through the guidance begin to live a life in which I hear their guidance, I like it, I don't like it, it doesn't matter. Most likely you don't like it. If you're doing something right, it's going to be heavy on the self. And then you hear the guidance and then you begin to fight the self, that's when you know it's right is that you battle the self to adhere to the teachings, to understand the teachings, to put it and make it to be real within our lives. As a result at that time Allah begin to grant within the ears the oceans of sincerity, hudan al-muttaqeen, hmm? a guidance for muttaqeen. This is how Allah opened Holy Qur'an. That Qur'an is going to be our guidance, Qur'an is the power of our existence, Qur'an, Holy Qur'an is the uncreated speech of Allah And right at the beginning after Surat Al-Fatiha which contains all of Holy Qur'an, that from Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem that contains all the realities of Holy Qur'an, it opens into seven fountains. These seven fountains are the source of every Ayatul Kareem of Holy Qur'an. Every Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, like if you could imagine seven waterfalls that spring every verse of Qur'an, known and unknown to us, that every time Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen is the fountainhead of every verse of praise. So from these immense waterfalls of Divine realities that have no beginning and no end, Allah begins after Surat Al-Fatiha, Alif Lam Mim, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابِ الْرَيْبَ فِي فَخُدًا الْمُتَّقِينَ Right there is the guidance of Ramadan because Allah wanted for us, stop your life, slow down. Don't even put anything in your mouth because that's such a big distraction. As soon as you cut things to your mouth, you have complete attention from Allah and your attention is upon Allah because the whole dunya shuts down when you can't eat. It's a time of reflection, it's a time in which you know everything else we're running, we're busy. It has its own miraculous way just to slow everything down. Blood pressure drops, all the function of the body begins to change and you're continuously reflecting about Allah your existence, your life, what have you been running for, what will be the end goal, what will be the result. 
All of that is Allah is what the love of Ramadan for Allah that the servant slows down and now contemplates their Creator. And right at the beginning, Alif Lam Mim Dalik al Kitab Allah Verily in this book the coding of Alif Lam Mim and then for verily in this book there is no crookedness but Hudan al Mutaqeen. It's a guidance for Mutaqeen. That's why you see people read Qur'an and they're crazy. They read Qur'an and they're crooks and thieves. Why? Because Allah just said, Khudan al Mutaqeen. They say, He's going to be for you a guidance until you submit. That all the fasting, praying, all of these things that we're doing, if we don't do with sincerity and we don't do with all the senses, how they read the same verses but they're violent people. How they read the same verses and they have very aggressive interpretations because they're not mutaqeen. They're reading Furqan, they read right and wrong. Means this can be a Furqan. If you have love of Sayyidina Muhammad because it has to be mixed with the Arabic messenger. What that means is that the light of Prophet has to be in your heart. Then when you read it, it's now above the level of Furqan and now becomes Qur'an. Otherwise if they don't have that ishq and love, they read but Furqan, Furqan is all right and wrong, right and wrong, right and wrong. It's devoid of ishq and love and very harsh and that's the other groups that are very tough. So Allah giving us an opportunity that if you're going to begin to read Holy Qur'an especially in the month of Ramadan, Hudan al-Mutaqeen, that it's a guidance for the Mutaqeen because Mutaqeen that they use all their senses for Allah They're not submitting just say, okay I'm submitting my, my nafs myself. I'm asking Ya Rabbi, I'm submitting my senses, my hearing for you. Samina watana, my eyes for you and I close them. Fast with your eyes, look at your feet, don't look around, don't look at bad. When you do make tawbah and istighfar, fasting with our breath that don't get into conversations and discussions that are unnecessary. Definitely not to fight and to argue. Unnecessary speech is like overeating and is abusive because every word that we put out you cannot take it back and the angel already wrote it. So this is like the, taking the elephant through the eye of a needle, once you squeeze it through you can't bring him back because it's written now in the kitab. Fasting with our hearing, with our eyes, with our breath, with our senses and our hands means every aspect of our being is to enter into the fast so that Allah make us to be mutaqeen, those whom have a immense taqwa. They don't, they don't claim their taqwa from themselves that you ask them, you have taqwa? Say, I have taqwa. But no, they've been trained. If you have taqwa from your hearing, then what would be your character? You have very clean hearing, you don't want to hear bad, you don't want to sit and listen to gossip all day long, you don't want to hear backbiting. Now you turn on TV. It's killing everyone. The news is just backbiting, it's no more khabar, it's no news what he did what that. Is one guy sit there and just keep talking bad, just keep talking bad, just keep talking bad because ghaiba is, uh, is going to destroy these realities and all shaitan wants to do is destroy insan on mass scale so that they can't reach the satisfaction of Allah so then the characteristics of mutaqeen, they would know themselves. So, Shaykh, how do I know if I'm mutaqeen? And then you would know if your hearing is of a caliber in which you are in a continuous fast that you don't want to hear bad. You have a lot of 
comfort in being alone. Because as soon as you're with people they want to talk and mostly they want to talk garbage about other people if you give them opportunity. And say, well I'm not saying it, they're saying it but listening to it is as bad as the one speaking to it because it's contaminating the heart. The garbage goes out, it contaminates everything. They say, how do you know if you're mutaqeen with your eyes is you try your best to keep your eyes to be clean. Because these are the same eyes in which you want to look and not through the physical eye but what this eye captures, you want it to capture the heavens and not the filthiness of dunya. Because with that filthiness on its lens how you can then try to direct it into the heavens? It gets contaminated so it's like trying to look through the heavens and you've sort of thrown all sorts of dirt onto the lens. And then you have to spend all your time continuously re-cleaning and polishing the heart. So the mutaqeen of the qalb and ahlul basira they try their best to abstain and they're even trained on how to wash from what they've seen with their eyes and what their eyes have captured. So that they use the purity of that lens of reflection into the heavens and towards the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad then their breath that they don't want to speak, they don't want to waste it, that the preciousness of what Allah has given to them, they conserve it and use it in the way of Allah and that was the unnecessary speech that doesn't need to be spoken. So that they train themselves on how to keep a path of silence. And that's why Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq had a rock for seven years and we said that many times that put a lollipop in your mouth so that you stop talking and keep a path in which to practice the way of the Salik and those whom took this path of realities. Fast with your hands and say that my hands not to be abusive, not to take me and to, to make something that's not halal for me because the hands were a symbol of power and authority. That one are you oppressing people and then what are you earning from your hands? And the mutaqeen to be conscious of what I earn Ya Rabbi from my, my hands and does it bring for me a purity into my home or contamination and difficulty? And that's why and that's what we talked earlier, zakat. Why to give zakat? Because it purifies from what your hand brought in of sustenance and imagine all the contamination that it brings in, those same hands have to give back. The what the hand brought, the hand has to give and even Prophet described, don't let one hand know from the other hand what it gave. Means the immensity of generosity that Allah opens and this is the month of generosity in which Allah going to grant immense blessings, immense blessings because within the blessings of this immense month in which Allah gives a reward in which no angel knows and no prophetic reality knows and Allah gives clearly just from His Divinely Presence for the sake of fasting, Allah within that holy month has Laylatul Qadr. Says that everything now is multiplied on Laylatul Qadr by 30,000 and if the servant should reach to that light then a lifetime of that multiplication upon every amal and every action that they do. So alhamdulillah that Allah inshaAllah inspire within us that in this blessed opportunity that Allah giving to us, it's not just by mouth, it's not just enter into hunger, complain that you're hungry and uh, what you don't have to eat and, and all of these but it's a fast of the entire being and that every year for those whom are on this way of marifa. Allah begin to open the senses and their realities. 
that open for them their hearing, open for them their seeing, open for them their sense of feel and touch so that they become more lat latif and more subtle in their energies so that they feel the energies. We pray that Allah address us and bless us with these immense blessings. InshaAllah tomorrow night we'll begin taraweeh for Saturday fasting, inshaAllah and uh, Allah dress everyone, bless everyone and that those who can fast they try their best to fast inshaAllah. Those who can't fast support those whom are fasting, give in the way of iftar and feed those whom are, are hungry and, and want to have iftar and those whom also don't have the ability to have their iftar. So we have programs in Pakistan and in different areas to give food and to give food to in the thousands because it's a 30-day supply that goes out in packages to hundreds of people and that's thousands of meals inshaAllah. These types of actions inshaAllah Allah makes this Ramadan to be blessed and packed with barakah, blessings and immense lights. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.